Now, on Twitter, um, there's an individual by the name of Miyuki Akira, Angel of the Black Wing. That's their uh, full name on Twitter. Their Twitter account is uh, Mi Akira, like me as in as in a me from <laughs> Nintendo. Nintendo, yeah. And M-I-I. Ak- and then Akira 2017. Um, this is an individual that posts a lot of uh, production art and a lot of... Uh, not just of Transformers, but all kinds of different anime series and stuff like that. It's a Japanese user. And they posted recently some interesting... Um, images that a lot of people didn't know existed and it came from a lot of uh, uh, rare sources like uh, laser disc books and stuff like that from back in the day and this was all production stuff from generation one of city formers or city or base formers uh, from the early 84 to 86 kind of era of G1 and the ones that were included are, are again, I'm going to post them, obviously, in the, the image for the video. But, and you can find them online. They're all, they're all over the place. But also, the news that has been shown of this only shows a couple of images. But if you actually go to the source material of where these images are coming from, which will be linked, uh, I'll link it in the, uh, in the description, they actually have more. So we'll just go through this one at a time, and I'll, I'll stop with the rambling here of it. But essentially, it's a whole bunch of city formers, and we'll go into the first one here. The first one, um, it, it's it's looks like a carrying case shaped like the Autobot logo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe a carrying case for the toys, and it opens up to make like a little kind of city playset kind of thing. Very simple, very uh, cool. Um, Something that I'm pretty sure would have easily existed back in the day by Milton Bradley would have probably released something like that when they had the, <laughs> when they had the license to do all the merch for for Generation One back then. Um, that was one that was shown. Another one is uh, essentially it's a pair of uh, images which shows the robot mode and city mode of what would be like the early designs of what is uh, Metroplex. Yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting from it. That and yeah. uh, Macross. It's very macros. Oh yeah, it, it's well. I'm I, again. I wouldn't be surprised when it comes to designers, you know, where they get their inspiration. But it's 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 interesting because it shows um, this Metroplex esque kind of uh, transformer, and it shows uh, him functioning with what looks like Jazz and Sideswipe uh, using their ramps and using the storage areas. Which anyone who knows uh, the actual Metroplex toy could barely hold mini bots. Yeah. So for some, it would obviously this was probably something that they were planning to be a lot larger to handle more of those deluxe sized Autobot cars from 1984 <clears throat> and 1985 in Japan. And then quickly changing their mind. <laughs> oh yeah, probably realizing way too big. Yeah. Um, but you you do see a lot of the aesthetics that are very similar uh, with the finalized Metroplex in terms of the ramps from the chest. Yeah, like uh, the chest uh, being these like. Um... Uh, rectangle cylinder kind of thingies, like yeah, these like big the storage areas, specific. Yeah. yeah, and just having the ramp that comes out of the chest. Um, even looking at the transformation itself, anyone that's messed with the original Metroplex toy, uh, how his legs would, because his legs were very hollow um, in robot mode, because they would unfold to open up to make like the city parts and stuff like that, and you could see. Uh, similarities to that. The only thing that I find fascinating with it is just how much more s- the emphasis on city is with this city mode, where it yeah. looks like th- it looks like there's a grocery store with <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> with a little, a little store car for- wash on the right hand side. There's a car wash. There's a, a what's it called? There an awning for someone else's little store there, there and there's, then there's a, a garage. There's, like a little, there's a little hangout um, like area where it has trees and plants. Yeah, and it, again, it. it <laughs> It, there's, there's a gas a, station. Yeah, there's a gas station. There's a there's a a fire exit. It looks like going in like from someone's balcony. It's it's very funny the way that this one w- was drawn with the intent that it really is an Autobot city. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though I don't think Autobots would really need some of this stuff. But yeah, exactly. They're too big for that. Um, and then there was a th- uh, a third image that was included, which was then again also a different take on. A city mode. Now, this this one, I 
a lot of people don't know what the source is. Looking at the, the Japanese written on it and translating some of it, um, I think this was more something intended for when the Daikon line was still in production. Yeah, because um, you could see it right there on the uh, top part. It oh, yeah. there's Daikon yeah. Station. Yeah, it says Daikon Station like, there, but there's right also, in, in the Japanese, there's also, it translates to Daikon stuff here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, and this one too, more of an emphasis on it's a city. Yeah. Um, and you even see there's a spot on the left that says coffee, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because Autobots need coffee. Again, and gas, and and there's a dealership. There's a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi logo there next to the gas station. Yeah, and then there's a there's a subway station uh, entrance there. The yeah. the uh, vehicles that are being shown with this one, it looks like um, Sideswipe again, and one of the Datsuns, probably. Um, I was going to say case, Prowl, but yeah, you're right. It's one of the Datsuns. It, well, Prowl is could, one of the Datsuns. Anybody. But, but yeah, it's, it pr it's probably Blue Streak. Or, um, because it doesn't have the light bar on it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have the the more tuned up uh, smoke screen kind of stuff going on. Right, right. Um, but yeah, again, it's a very big emphasis on a city kind of thing. This one makes more sense because if it is Daikon, these were piloted cars. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that the humans would chill in. Uh, I don't even know if this would have been a transforming station per se. Uh, because I would say no. I don't think this would work. Daikon had a lot of um, playsets and stuff that weren't uh, stuff that transformed from a playset to a robot. They had a lot of playsets that transformed from a playset to a, a mobile vehicle. So I wouldn't be surprised if A, this was something that was more along those lines or just a playset that just was just a playset. Because you know, even if you look at the scale of what the cars look like... Yeah, it's massive. It's huge. There's yeah, like a the, median, and there, there's like tail... Like there's lights. There's a po there's like little post post box. Like, it's ridiculous. Assuming those little human-drawn sketches there are supposed to be Daikon driver-sized, then this is a very large playset that probably didn't transform. Yeah. So, uh, again, that's, a, that's another interesting one there. And the last image, which is the most intriguing... Mm -hmm. um, and and again, it's. Well, I'm it's really... not the last image though. Well, it's yeah, it's technically me. yeah. It's the it's, last it's, image in these the last that we image have of here. this of this news posting, and then we'll get to a, an extra one that if you do a little digging, you'll find it. Uh, but the last image of this news posting, um, which and again, it's it's pretty intriguing in the sense that I'd like to know when this was conceived. Is it's a G1 Optimus Prime in his G1 flat nose cab, but and it transforms into a robot mode in the same exact style. But on top of all of that. It has this whole extra tooling to it that it also becomes a battle station. Now, the funny thing about this is when you really look at the engineering and the design of it, a lot of this is all stuff that almost could have existed already in the original G1 toy. Um, the the original G1 toy had removable fists, so yeah. these these missiles for this uh, city mode could have easily been extra third-party pieces that could have been plugged in. Eh, eh, eh. Hint, hint, maybe to a company if they want to ape on this. Um, secondly, the um, the exhaust pipes on his shoulders were articulated, so you could you know point them forward if you wanted to. Yeah. Not transforming the head um, would would have a little peg hole on the top of G1 Optimus Prime. Now, the peg hole on the non-transformed Optimus Prime head would either be covered by the rub sign for for later rub sign 84, 85 and above Optimus Prime releases, uh, but otherwise it was just that hole existed because it was pretty much where the head was on yeah. the opposite side of that panel, so it needed somewhere where the joint could be in the screw. But that's something that here, it's taking advantage of that and putting a double turret that probably exactly. plugs into it. The more only thing guns. that's yeah, that more guns. The only thing that's really unique about it is now again the G1 Optimus Prime toy. The chest folds down, which was more so just because the original Daikon toy needed to have the drivers in there. This one they retooled the chest and everything that it it opens, it folds down, it makes a ramp, and then it has like this storage area for cars. Now for again, four cars basically. Yeah, for four cars. Now again, this clearly would have not been applied to the original G1 Optimus Prime toy because this would make the cars extremely tiny, like micro-machine tiny. Or, so, uh, I'm looking at it again, it could be that it's for two cars, two cars at the bottom, and then the two turrets go into the top cab, top oh, part of the cab. It's a possibility. So it, it shows that there's something clearly going on here. Uh, maybe this was intended 
to be an upscaled Optimus Prime that would turn into something that would work with mini bots or alternatively a little larger to work with the deluxe Autobots. Maybe this was an early Diclon design again of something that they were pro probably trying to play with where it's like well since his trailer becomes some kind of repair bay maybe this could turn into something also that the drivers could sit in um and then that would make more sense with the scale in terms of like well then why you know what what is what's sitting in those four little bays there maybe they're yeah. maybe they're little i mean i'm looking at them maybe they could be little beds you know, maybe they could be like, little. Well, yeah, when the turrets are out, maybe little beds, and then because the 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 the, tr the ramp, it doesn't go all the way to the top. It it looks like it could probably move along the um the bump, the uh, how is it called, the bumper, the front bumper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like you could only you could only drive up into those two slots on either side. I don't think the whole front tilts forward, so you can use take more advantage of the ramp. Yeah, it's that's what it's I'm looking at it. It's really interesting, and again, that's why I'm I'm more interested in um, when this art was drawn because that will give you an idea of the more intention of design. Because if it was drawn with the intention for the Transformers line, I think this is something that would have been done in a larger scale. If this was something that was done in the early concepts of Battle Convoy or the original G1 Optimus Prime for Diaclon. I think that this would have probably been the same scale and it would have been just like, well, how do we get more, you know, what do we do more with this with this design when it becomes the base mode? Is there a way to make a base mode also for the robot? And on top of the, just the trailer also opening up and becoming a repair bay. And again, the last thing they show us there is, you know, also while it's standing up, it could do all the same stuff. You yeah, know, it could it could also have the chest open, and but now it looks like a flight deck or something. Yeah, so it's it's <laughs> it's very interesting. It's very very interesting, and what's what I find the most fascinating about it is there's a lot of stuff here that's going on that literally, with a little messing around, could exist today with the actual G1 Optimus Prime toy. I mean, the funny thing is, is that the original G1 toy, like I said, the chest opens for the fact that it has to house. Uh, the Diclon drivers with the original toy, but mm -hmm. I, but you could remove that chest if you di if you disassemble it, and if a third party company invents some kind of new chest piece, includes those little change of fist missiles right. and adds a turret for the top, you could almost have a third party kit that kind of mimics what's going on here. And again, it's interesting. It's really interesting that one, and I'm I'm kind of interested in the history of that one. And the last one, the last one, and this one you could only see if you actually go to me akira 2017's actual twitter page if you scroll down a little bit um to let me just get the date on it if you go to their wednesday uh september 20th posting um they have what is looks like um and it's very fascinating this one most interesting of the bunch a autobot arc mount saint hillary playset yeah. And this is pretty awesome. Where it's it's again it has a handle on the top so it's like a playset you could carry around and it's when it's closed up it looks like a mountain with an entrance with a little little like you know tunnel. And then you open it up and it's more or less again there's no colors here so if it was primarily orange it would really give it away but it it's the thing that really told me it was the Autobot arc more than anything aside from it being a mountain was it even has the arcs um, alt mode scanner probe yep. is there, and what looks like a Teletran one yeah, uh, computer. Buddy. You know, so this looks awesome. <laughs> Th this looks amazing, and like it's it's something. When I first looked at it, I'm like, is this some kind of Kenner mask design? Mm -hmm. You know, that didn't get released, or or a Micro Man when they were doing their Micro Change, like you know, uh, three inch figure line, and they had play sets. Nope. According to the translation of uh, according to the translation of this post, it was a uh, storage mountain base that was meant for transformers, and this was actually a picture that was originally in the booklet of the uh, Laserdisc box set for Generation One back in October of 1984. So, very interesting. This one. This this is out of all of them that we've seen thus far. This is the one that I kind of wish existed. <laughs> um, because this is something that it probably looked like it would have worked maybe only with mini bots. Probably um, again, if it was, if it'd have to be pretty large to fit Optimus Prime and them in it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this thing looks so cool. 
this is like, I mean, the little Teletran, you know, launch area for the probe. There's a yep. little, re- there's a little like repair bay that looks similar to Ratchet's repair bay on the bottom floor of the second part. And then the Teletran computer area on a the lot second of ramps, floor. A lot of guns, a lot yeah, of turrets. It looks, it looks so cool. And then it all closes up to make Mount St. Hillary, which is where the Ark crashed. I mean, this is, this is so awesome that I, th- I love I I love play sets. I love play sets to death. Like, you know, little micro play sets like Mighty Max and and Microverse with Beast Wars. I love play sets and the concept of play sets because there's been something that has been so absent from Transformers. And when there has been like cities and play sets and stuff, they've literally been a play set more in name than actual function. Where, again, no offense to Metroplex and Fortress Maximus and stuff. I mean, a lot of them were really just making the best of what they could without actually being playsets. I loved what Micromasters did. Again, hearkening from what Micro Machines was doing with their playsets, mm-hmm. where Micromasters had these great playsets and, and Zone Base, which was known as... That Count transformed De- and everything. There'll be like an actual scene, a set... Yeah, they were actual play sets. They were actual. And then they transform into like a base or something. They actually had like little computer terminals and stuff like that that the MicroMasters could work at. And I love that kind of stuff. And that's why I love MicroMasters and stuff. And those were some of my first Transformers. Same here, same here. And stuff like this was right up my alley. Like this is this is absolutely incredible. And this is something that if it ever did get if it ever did get released. Years later, people could have used like their world smallest transformers with this. You know, your G1 world smallest transformer, Optimus yeah, Prime, exactly. would have fit perfectly in this in scale, and everything would have been nice and harmonized, and it would all look like great. You so tell, they would def- definitely be able to use that ladder there next to Trellatran One. Oh yeah, yeah, that oh, little that's... teeny tiny ladder. Yeah, it, it's so. I'm great. like There's... that'd be the first to go. It's so great. Again, uh, <laughs> that'd be like the first o- thing to break. On obviously, that. the photos that I'm gonna post. Um, in, in the image for the uh, for the video are, are not going to be able to do it justice, but I will um, post links in the description of this video so that people could see it directly um, and really see it in high resolution and, and really like, you know, fangasm out on what's going on here, but it, it looks great. I just, I love this. Anything I else you want to touch on it? No, I, I dig it. I like that there's a handle and it's all closed up so you can pick it up and carry it to your friend's place. Um, no, you like... N- hit the nail on the head. I'm trying to like look at it, look at it closer to see if I could see anything else. But oh man, that'd be a lot of orange. How would orange hold up or yellow? How would that hold up over the years? Well, it it holds up no worse than any other orange like a Roddy, you know? Okay. So I don't I, and not to mention if it's on the inside, the outside would be like the typical brown of mm-hmm. Mount St. Hillary and the inside would be very orange like like all of the Autobot arc. So I think it would have looked great. I kind of hey third party man hey get on this <laughs> get you want my money get Iron on this. Factory yeah get on yeah Iron Factory seriously Ooh, the Iron call Factory. out the gauntlet is dropped there you go Iron Factory you need a playset for your stuff Toy there Arc you, do it yeah jeez <laughs> you're right eh you know they had that beautiful display at TFCon yeah sh- man. showing off literally all their creations joint now, joint venture get now, uh get um. Repro labels on it. There you yeah, go. Yeah, build a Boom. nice playset. Repro labels will like do the backgrounds for it or something. <laughs> I'm. I, it would be like an instant seller. That's that's the one thing. I don't want to go off on a tangent before we finish, but it's just like, <laughs> but it's like I always felt that there's there's such. I feel that there's a market for stuff that harkens back to G1 aesthetic. I always feel like if they like today, if if any third party company would go out of their way and make a, a G1 aesthetic. G1 RC, like how she was meant to be, or like the Unicron. I'm oh, pretty God. sure. I'm as as ugly as both of those would be by today's standards. The mango. Yeah. I'm pretty sure people would eat it up. I'm pretty sure like a lot oh, of collectors man. would eat it up. And again, it's it's those are so simple to engineer. You know what I mean? Yep. It's not the super complexity of what third party is expected to do in terms of pieces and paint and everything. You know, that we would not be expecting. Wouldn't you get like something close to Impossible Toys, maybe? Mm, no, it's it, it's just it's something that well, yeah, Impossible Toys at one time was kind of doing something like that, mm. but they never really ventured too far out. 
they kind of were just sticking with mini bots and stuff like that and, and okay. non non transforming designs with their Quintus online. Where this it's like I mean this this playset man this this would work for a lot of different people for a lot of different play styles for their G one for their world smallest for their Creos mm. you know for their bot shots for for all the like you know the smaller scale Small transform guys, yeah yeah Legends, like maybe Leg Legends, oh yeah like Legends it. Legends totally Legends are are in that mini bot kind of you know size all the mini cons there's there's so many people that could enjoy this if this this exists so hey third party get on this. We built this city. Da -da -da -da. We built this.